In this video, we're going to look at how we can implement the disabling of a button when a form submits and changing the text of that button as well. So let's say you have a form that you want a user to fill out. So maybe you want to for them to enter their name or something. Uh, and you want to go ahead and allow them to hit a submit button. Now, if this submit process um, is going to send uh, an email or is going to insert some data into a database or do something that you don't want to be submitted twice, perhaps making a payment, anything like that, um, you may want to go ahead and disable the button so that if the web server is taking a little longer to respond and it's you know the web page is loading while it posts this data, then you might want to disable it and maybe add a little message here. So what we're going to be doing is implementing a form and we're then going to go ahead and use jQuery to find this button within this submitted form and go ahead and disable it and change the text within it as well. So here's a little example. This doesn't actually post anywhere. We've just done a return false on the event handler and we'll take a look at what that means in a minute. But basically uh, I can go ahead and enter any information here I want. Uh, obviously nothing here works and I can go ahead and click send. So what this has now done is it's disabled the button so I can no longer click on it. If we go ahead and inspect this, you can see that we've got disabled, uh, the disabled attribute equals disabled. So this is now disabled and I can't click or do anything with it. And the value of this is now please wait. Now we also have this data submit value and basically this allows us as a web developer to customize what we want to show here on specific instances. And the class up here defines that we have a form that we can actually have a button in here that does, does disable. And this will work with an input type of submit, so an input element, but this will also work with a button as well, so it works with different elements as well. So let's go ahead and start writing out the code that allows us to do this. Okay, so over to our text editor, I'm not going to go ahead and waste time actually building this form or using uh, or inserting jQuery in here so we can use it. But I'll go ahead and take a minute to explain just what how everything's set up here. So we've got basic document markup, we've got a form here, an action of hash, we're just not really submitting anywhere, this is just an example. In reality obviously this would go to a specific location. We've got a method as well and we've got two elements within this form. So the first one is an input type of text, which basically just looks like this. It allows a user to enter the name, fairly straightforward. Uh, we have a placeholder in there as well, not really important in this example, but it helps. So we also have an input type of submit and a value. So that just has uh, this element here, which is a send. So whatever we uh, apply as our action, this will then submit to. So you see that's just submitted that data within that form to hash. We're going to ignore the fact that we, you know, this is a functional form. It's not functioning properly. Uh, we don't need it to, so it's not really doing anything useful. Now, the next thing that we want to take a look at is that I've included jQuery here from Google hosted libraries. So however you're serving jQuery, whether it's a local copy, a CDN copy, or a Google CDN or hosted libraries copy, that's fine. And I also have a uh, link to an external JavaScript file, which we're going to be writing the code in for this. So that's basically it. We're going to make a few modifications to this form, including the uh, submit element as well, and uh, we'll write the JavaScript along with this. So first of all, within the markup, let's take a look at how we actually want this to work. Well, for every form that I want this functionality to work on, I want to go ahead and give this a class. And this class is going to identify the forms that will uh, whose input submit button or button will be disabled. So I'm going to go ahead and call this form disable. You can go ahead and give it whatever you name, whatever name you feel appropriate, as long as you target this when we create the event handle later. Now, with the input type of submit, we do want to go ahead and add a data attribute to this in a moment. But we're going to look at a short way of doing this, and then I guess a long way of doing this. So let's go ahead and create the event uh, handler for this, and we need to use a jQuery selector first. So we do a jQuery selector on the class of form disable, and then we use the on method to basically create an event handler. So I'm going to say on submit. So this basically means that when the form is submitted via a button, 
then this event handler will be triggered. So we also have a function here. So we have a callback, which does something when the form submitted. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log submitted, and then I'm going to go ahead and return false. Now what return false will do is it will stop the default uh, behavior of this button. The default behavior of this button or the form rather will be to go through to this action, sending the data in the method that we provide. So we're just returning false so it doesn't do anything. If we take a look in the console when I hit send now, it says submitted and nothing happened. So we're not submitting to the hash that we saw before. We're just doing nothing. And this is just for an example purpose. You wouldn't include return false normally on a form. You'd want it to submit through, you know, to wherever you wanted. So we'll leave return false there for the purpose of this tutorial, just so it's, you know, we can see our button actually working. So what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to create a variable called self, which is going to reference the jQuery object this. And this is just going to allow us to easily reference self and, you know, if we want to find something. So I'm going to uh, come down here and tab in and I'm going to create a selector or a find, use the find method and pass in a selector for the input type of submit. So the input field, or sorry, the input element with a type of submit, so a type attribute or a button. So let's go ahead and create this variable. So button equals self. We're referencing what we've just created above. Find, so we use the find method, and then we pass in a selector. In this case, it's an input, and we need to do an attribute selector. So we create square brackets, and we say type equals, and then we look for which type we want, which is submit. And we comma separate selectors to select multiple, and in this case, I just want to select button. So in this case, button now references this here. So we can go ahead and use that to change the value. Let's go down then and actually create the functionality. So I'm going to say button dot and I'm going to use the attribute method to change a specific attribute or add an attribute. In this case it's disabled. So I give the name of the attribute and then the value of the attribute as well. So let's take a look at how this works. So the first thing we're doing is referencing the form itself and then we're using uh, the find method to find the input within the form. So when we go ahead and refresh here and click send, you can see that that is now disabled. So now what we want to go ahead and do is actually change the value of the uh, form button or the button. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tab down here just to make things look a little bit easier. You don't have to do this. We can actually just probably go ahead and append it to the end. So I'm going to say dot val. So the val attribute will change the value of this. And I'm just going to change this to please wait. So when I go ahead and refresh now, not only does that disable, it actually changes the value as well to please wait. So we've got the functionality we need, but how about making this a little bit more flexible? So what I'm going to do is within the form itself, I'm going to go ahead and add a data attribute onto this field. So I'm going to call this data uh, submit value and I'm going to give this a specific value so I'm going to say please wait or just wait for example just so we can see that this works a little bit differently so what this is going to do now is rather than um, actually change this to please wait we have a hard-coded value in here we're going to pick up this data attribute this value here and then change it accordingly because what if we had two instances of this form? Well, we might want one to say just wait and we might, might want one to say please wait. We never know. So we're going to make it as flexible as possible. So what we need to do is under here, we need to say submit value equals. And then we're going to go ahead and say button. So we're referencing the selector here, button. We're going to say button.data, so we use the data method to get the data attribute that we want, and that's submit value. So this might look a little bit strange, but data will basically pick up any data attribute, and this is the name of the data attribute. It's data and then hyphen and then whatever the name you want it to be. So this is what we're picking up here. So submit value will now contain the value just wait, so it'll be a string of just wait. Now what we can do inside of val is go ahead and say submit value. So this will now contain this value. 
So when we refresh and click send, it says just wait. However, what if we decide that we just don't want to include this and we want this to default to a default value? Well, at the moment, what's going to happen is this is just going to go to nothing, which is a shame. It doesn't look very good. And, you know, if we miss it out someplace, it's not going to look very professional. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and only include this string if this data attribute is available. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in here, what we want to do is create a ternary operator. And we're going to go ahead and say if submit value, then we want to output submit value. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and have a default value. Of please wait. So it's just basically saying, does this exist? If it does, then output submit value. Otherwise, output please wait. So returning to the example, if we hit send, it says just wait because we have this value here. But if we get rid of this, save that and refresh, that doesn't exist. So we see the message, please wait. So don't remember, uh, don't forget to get rid of the return false here. Um, ordinarily, this would then just go through to whatever page you want. Uh, obviously, if this takes, say, a couple of seconds, the user will see the please wait message and then they'll have to wait and won't be able to resubmit the form. So for the purpose of the example, we'll include uh, return false in there. So that's how to create a disable and change of message on a form button when you submit a form.